Yeah, this for you people who are taking applied calculus and even people who are taking engineering calculus. I'm going to do a bunch of very easy derivatives. And people have trouble with these, not so much because of this simple rule, x to the n, where n, by the way, is any real number that belongs to the reals, okay, and uh, is n times x to the n minus 1. But they have trouble with the algebra involved often. Now, if it's something like this, this is very easy. I just bring the 5 out front. I have x, I'm sorry, 5. And I subtract 1, and I get 5x to the 4th. That's pretty easy, okay? You can even skip this step and just go right directly to 5x to the 4th. Then you get into something like this. Here we have x to the 2 thirds. Well, I bring 2 thirds out front, and I take 2 thirds, and I subtract 1. And you have to realize it's 2 uh, thirds times x. Well, this is 3 thirds, isn't it? 2 thirds minus 3 thirds is a negative 1 third. And you might want to bring it down and do it as 2 over 3 times x to the 1 third power, which is really, I could use a cube root symbol there too. And this is a little better form if I want to evaluate it at a number. That's 1 third, by the way. And uh, this, is, this is a fine form just to give an answer. This is the answer, and this is just a little bit better form there. And then we have things like 1 over uh, x cubed. Well, I bring it up stairs, and it becomes negative x cubed. I have to put prime there. Remember, always be careful about what you're doing. If you're going to take the derivative, indicate it with prime notation or the Leibniz notation. And then when you write it over here and change it, you can keep the, the prime. And you don't get rid of that until you actually go negative 3x to the negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4. Now still, you might want to put that x downstairs and it becomes positive if you bring h a negative exponent from the numerator down to the denominator becomes positive, and vice versa. So that's a little better form. If we go over here, we can look at a few more. By the way, I urge you to stop the video and go back, because I'm going through these as fast as I can. Now, this should have said prime. I almost made the student's mistake. I'm actually taking the derivative of this. And this equals, well, I can bring this, this is actually x to the 1 -fifth power, and if I bring it up to the numerator becomes negative one-fifth power. But now I can use my rule. See, the whole idea is to see all of these. It's just x to the n. And so I bring one-fifth here, and this is x. Now, this is negative one-fifth minus one, right? Negative, I mean, let me write that better. Uh, now, that's negative five-fifths, so it should give me uh, negative one-fifth times x to the negative six-fifths, right? negative six-fifths. Again, if I bring it down, I'll get my answer negative one-fifth. I'm sorry, let me do that again. Negative one over five times x to the six-fifths power, okay? And that's a little better because we can evaluate it. By the way, talking about evaluations, here's one. Now, you can write it, as I said, you can write with prime notation. That's perfectly good. Or you can write Leibniz notation if you wanted to. And this is a little better if you have different variables because this will tell you you're doing it with respect to the independent variable f, x, you're taking this derivative. And they use the evaluation bar x equals 16, like that, okay? Now, I can do either one of these, you know. I think I'll choose this one to do it this way. This is actually x to the one-half power, isn't it? One-half power with respect to x, and we're going to evaluate it at x equals 16. And the derivative of this, I have to bring the 1 half out, 1 half, and then I have x to the uh, 1 half minus 1, and we're evaluating at x equals 16. Notice the derivative is gone because I've taken the derivative, but this stays because I haven't evaluated it yet. And this, of course, equals 1 half uh, x to the negative 1 half, again evaluated at x equals 16. Now. I, I can't really evaluate it at a negative exponent, but if I bring the x down, I can say, well, this is 1 over 2 times x to the 1 half power evaluated at x equals 16. Remember that 1 half is the square root. So I've got 1 over 2 times the square root of x, and now I'm going to put 16, and if you can follow me, I'll bring it up here, okay? And I've got 1 over 2 times uh, 16. I'll just use the square root sign now, the square root of 16. And, of course, this is 4, this gives you 8, and it's 1 8 
eighth is the answer. But it's the way you do it. You, you keep the derivative, you keep the evaluation sign, all the way until you don't have a derivative, but you still have an evaluation sign. And when you write equals, it has to equal. If you drop the evaluation sign, you no longer can say equal.